And so, Father, we declare that you do what you alone can do in our midst. Continue with us. The table that you have laid that is ready for us to eat, take, enjoy as much as we like. Let us benefit from it through your word. Let there be light. Let there be understanding. Thank you for your presence and for your power. Let your name be glorified. In Jesus' name, have I prayed with thanksgiving. Hallelujah. You may be seated in God's presence. Amen. Open your Bible quickly because there's some vital information that I need to pass across to us. Uh, this day, and the Lord God Almighty will bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Turn to somebody and say, my brother or my sister, don't allow anything or anyone to distract you. Turn to another person. My brother, my sister, don't be moved. Be focused. Because where God is taking you to, you will get there in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let, let's appreciate uh, Pastor Ayo for that. Uh, amen. Amen. Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. And we'll read verse 49 to 50. Even as we look at the, uh, the part 4 of this series of teaching on Bartimaeus, as our main text is Mark 10, 46 to 52. But for today's message, we'll be considering verse 49 to 50. And I read from the New King James Version. The Bible says, So Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. Then they called the blind man, saying to him, Be of good cheer, rise, he is calling you. And throwing aside his garment, he rose and came to Jesus. Hallelujah. He rose and he came to Jesus. There are information that are vital that I'm going to give to you uh, today. I need you to write it down, please. If you have not been writing notes at all in messages, today's message, please write note down. Take out your phone and type in amen. You will need it. If not now, you need it for tomorrow or in the future. Amen. Praise the Lord. And I know what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. Amen. For you to be elevated as God explained it to me. Amen. Looking at the book of Mark chapter 10 verse 49 to 50. And the life of Bartimaeus as a case study. Number one. You must have a life that is without mediocrity, that is without procrastination, because your intention, your purpose, your goal, your aspiration must be attained. Bartimaeus did not procrastinate. He knew that he must not miss that time. And he took advantage of that time. But with God, there is an order. God is a God of order. Orderliness is one thing that God don't joke with. Bartimaeus keyed into that system, that divine system, and he got what he wanted. Can I say to someone watching right now, someone listening, that it does not cost God anything to create heaven and earth and everything in it in one day. But he did it in six days. Some have issue when I say my father in heaven told me, hallelujah, 
But there are signs, hallelujah, and that is what is most important. My father said I should say to someone here, <laughs> whatever challenges you are going through is a process to you becoming a champion. Hallelujah. God has the power to have created the heavens and earth in one day. But it took him six days, hallelujah. Because he moves from one step to another, precept upon precept. Say to someone, you could have graduated one day. Say to someone, you could have graduated one day. But it took you either one or two or three years. Hallelujah. Because there is a process. Amen. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. So God is saying the same way Bartimaeus went through a process. We must be patient to also go through that process. No mediocrity, no procrastination. Because your intention must be about your goal, your aspiration, your purpose, and your vision. Hallelujah. Number two that I saw from that scripture as the Lord opened my spiritual eyes is that for you to be elevated, you must be precise, you must be definite, and you must be accurate about your desire. Hallelujah. I take that again. For you to be elevated, you must be precise. You must be definite. You must be accurate about your desire. The people tried to shut him down. They told him to be quiet. But Bible told us that yet he lifted up. He cried out the more. What do you desire? Go for it the more. Hallelujah. Bible told us that the that, that, that they that know their God, they shall be strong and they will do great exploit. Hallelujah. Remember, like I said to you last Sunday, it is about your life. Faith is personal. Hallelujah. It is about your business. Your business is personal to you. It is about your family. Your family is personal to you. It is about your wife. Your wife is personal to you. It is about your husband. Your husband is personal to you. It is about your children. Your children is personal to you. Hallelujah. Whatever you fail to achieve now will speak to you in your future. Hallelujah. And in most cases, we do regret that how I wish, how I knew, or I know I should have done it that time when the opportunity came. Hallelujah. Amen. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that we will be accurate about what our desires are before God and before men. And God Almighty will help us in the name of Jesus. But may us didn't beat about the bush. Hallelujah. Number three, for you to be elevated. And before I say number three, I had the Holy Spirit clearly. He said, until God sees your commitment and your dedication to a particular cause, you cannot be elevated. Amen. And I said, Lord, I need a proof to that. And it took me to Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. Are we getting something? Amen. The story of Bartimaeus is to help us to be a better Christian, and also to walk our way to what God wants us to get. Remember, God is already speaking about next year. That it's a year that we must redeem the time. Hallelujah. Amen. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, and I read, For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit, and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. It's a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Amen. Before you act, you already know your heart, what your intentions are. Amen. Praise the Lord. And the Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Number three things that I saw from that, Mark chapter 10, verse 49 to 50, that made but me was to be elevated was that despite the fact that he was blind and he was known to be a beggar, Bartimaeus was extremely sensitive. For you to be elevated, you must be extremely sensitive 
to the things of the spirit. The natural man cannot understand the things of the spirit. It's only the spirit man that can understand the things of the spirit. So never approach God or the things of the gospel by your flesh. Never try to say what God is saying through the sense of man. Hallelujah. Because the word of God knows your intent and it can discern the thoughts of your heart. And the Lord God Almighty will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. We tend to forget the Bible says God uses the foolish things of this world even to confound the wise. Another thing that Bartimaeus did in that same number three point, he was very attentive. Amen. He was very attentive to the fact that he heard that Jesus Christ is around. Amen. You must be attentive to what God is saying. Amen. And that's why Bible at times will say, if you will act diligently, amen, praise the Lord. I remember a case, the Lord told me clearly, he says, don't respond, don't fight, don't argue, just leave everything to me. Hallelujah. But I was being pushed to the wall that I felt like saying something. But the Lord kept saying, just acting diligently. And I did, amen. And at the end of it all, when Pastor Nomer was doing Sunday school, I was just smiling. The people walked to me. You know you don't need to tell people that you are a Christian. They will know by your heart. They will know by your fruits, hallelujah. They said, how come you were so cool and calm? Despite the fact that we took you through hostility. Amen. Praise the Lord. For weeks. Amen. I said, greater is he that is in me. That is why. So who is that he? I said, the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, if you may know, now I can tell you. Because now you know that there's something different. Amen. I'm a pastor. No wonder that you didn't react this way. And now everybody gives me the honor. Amen. And that was what happened with Bartimaeus. There is an honor coming your way, coming your life. Amen. Praise the Lord. But you must be, you must be attentive and not approach the things of God in the flesh or with the sense of man. Another thing that Bartimaeus did also, he was proactive. Even though he can't see, he was proactive. Why? Because he, has, he had a positive mind. Amen. If there was a thermometer to measure our faith level, so some of us will not pass. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. One mouth you say you believe God. Another mind you are doubting God. Amen. Bartimaeus knew that a solution has come. Amen. And he held on to that. Hallelujah. Do you believe that God can do all things for you? Do you believe that God will answer you? Do you believe that God is more than able? He will do it. Hallelujah. One of our challenges is, is because we place time to God. Hallelujah. We've forgotten that God owns time. He says he will make all things beautiful in his own time, not our own time. Please take note. Number four, that God revealed to me from that mark 10 for you to be elevated. Bartimaeus was steadfast. So which means for you to be elevated, you must be steadfast. You must be steady. You must be stable and you must be ready for your elevation. That is why you find that those who fail they don't get promoted. They don't earn promotion. Hallelujah. Amen. It is only those who are steady, who are steadfast, who are ready, who have the mind that yes, they are going to the same class. When Dikunusi was talking about somebody who was promoting himself, medical student, amen. I know what they go through, especially if you study in Nigeria, amen. You were promoting yourself knowing fully whether you are failed. Amen. Praise the Lord. 
I don't even want to go there. Amen. Praise the Lord. Because the thing is still, please forgive me, doing my head in. Amen. Now, how can, hallelujah, the sleepless night, the burning of the candle, amen. Praise God. So, what is God trying to say is, don't let your fasting, your prayer, your praise, your giving, amen, your involvement with God be in vain. Hallelujah. Even though Bartimaeus was blind, Bible did not tell us that he was going to church, but his lifestyle reflected somebody who knows Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Because he had, amen, he has not seen the miracles that Jesus Christ did, but he had that Jesus Christ was in town. And he was determined, was ready, that this is my time. Amen. And I wrote there, Bartimaeus, didn't waste time. Hallelujah. Every time that you and I must have wasted, God will restore back to us. I said, God will restore back to us. I said, God will restore back to us. Ah, in the mighty name of Jesus. Number five, are you getting something? Amen. That I saw from that Hebrew, from that Mark chapter 10, verse 49 to 50. Bartimaeus sees the moment and he got divine attention. He seek the moment and he got divine attention. How did he manage to get divine attention? Despite the multitude, despite the crowd, he ensured that his voice was heard. Amen. Whatever you aspire to become, hand it over to God. Let God speak for you. Let God represent you. Let God protect you. Let God introduce you. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't have anything against it and don't get me wrong. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't do business card. Amen. Praise the Lord. In fact, it becomes a, 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 a thing among pastors. Hallelujah. Anywhere you go, this is my card. This is my card. Oh, Pastor Philip, don't you have card? I said, no, because I have Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. When you represent Jesus Christ, it will introduce you to your world. I say it will introduce you to your world. I say this with humility. Hallelujah. At times people call me and say, somebody told them about me. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. You will receive calls because somebody told them about you because Christ is involved. I said because Christ is involved. Because Christ is involved. The same people who told him to be quiet were the same people that says, be of good share. He is calling you. Oh, say to somebody, people will recommend you. People will recommend you. People will speak about you. People will speak concerning you. And it shall be well with you in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Also, he didn't just get divine attention. Oh, thank you, Lord. Amen. Do you know that life become easy and work become easier when we allow God to have his way in everything that we do? Amen. The Holy Spirit just dropped that. Amen. At times we'll struggle because we believe we can do it by ourselves. Forgetting the Bible says, by strength shall no man prevail. I have learned to, to hand over everything to God. Amen. And let me sing this song to us. Maybe we'll encourage someone. Amen. Through it all. Through it all. I have learned to trust in Jesus. I have learned to trust in God. Through it all. Through it all, I have learned to lean upon the word of God. Amen. Don't worry, I will still give us scriptures. Hallelujah. But I need to establish these 10 points quickly. Number six, because of time, so I'm going to rush now. Number six, for you to be elevated, just as we saw in the life of Bartimaeus in Mark chapter 10, verse 49 to 50, you must refuse and reject all forms of distraction from men. He 
insisted you must embrace and endear yourself to godly visitation. Again, when Pastor I was leading oh, oh, first anointing this morning, I was talking about uh, visitation. I was just smiling. Hallelujah. That God is in this place. Amen. There was visitation. You know, uh, Jacob had visitation, he never knew. Amen. But I pray in the name of Jesus, when God visits you, you will know. You will understand. You will identify, you will recognize it in the mighty name of Jesus. Spiritually, you will not be blind. I say spiritually, you will not be blind. In the mighty name of Jesus, God will help you in the name of Jesus. Number seven, that we can see from that scripture, Bartimaeus was firmly focused in achieving his heart desire and ambition to receive his sight. Amen. Say to someone, don't give up on your ambition. No matter the challenges, no matter the hindrances, no matter the difficulties, don't give up on your ambition. Amen. Say to that person, guess what? You don't need people. As long as you have God, you will attain it. Amen. You, you know, many times we, 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 we become timid and afraid. Amen. That why is people not following me? Why is people not trying to help me? Amen. Praise the Lord. But when you have God, amen, and when God helps you, you are sorted. Amen. Number eight, that Bartimaeus did, he was completely unwavering and he demonstrated passion for the restoration of his sight. If you don't have passion for your purpose, if you don't have passion for your vision, if you don't have passion for your goal, no one will believe in you. Amen. Even God himself will not invest in you. Because God is not a waster of resources. So whatever God has given to you, or whatever you feel that God wants you to do, do it well. Amen. Praise the Lord. Show passion. It is not time for you to sleep or be slothful or be slack. But Timaeus was not slothful. He was not slack. He was not unwavering. He demonstrated passion because the Bible says immediately he took off his garment. Hallelujah. And he came to Jesus. Amen. Now I want to show us, I want to show us something. Bible says, Jesus Christ stood still and he commanded, call him to come. And Bible told us that he came to Jesus. Have you thought of how a blind man could come to Jesus without anyone aiding him? Because Bible didn't tell us that they took him to Jesus. He came to Jesus. Hallelujah. And that is passion. When you have passion, you will find a way where people say there's no way. When you have passion, you will overcome limitation that life has put on you. When you have passion, you will rise above every mountain that may want to obstruct you. And that reminds me of Matthew 11. The Bible says, come unto me. He didn't say, bring them. He said, come. So it's a personal thing. Hallelujah. When you must come to him, you must let go of everything that will weigh you down. Amen. And then number nine, Bartimaeus knew what he wanted from the Lord and that he seek for only. Amen. He knew what he wanted and what he wanted was that he would be elevated from the ground level even to a higher level where his vision can be restored. And number 10, it demonstrated his trust, confidence, and belief that Jesus Christ will heal him. Amen. So for all those 10 points, let's read Hebrews 11 verse 6. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. Hebrews chapter 11 
verse 6. Hebrews 11, verse 6, Bible says that but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who come to God must believe that he is and that is a rewarder of those who what? Diligently seek him. And we saw here, amen, that Bartimaeus diligently seek after Jesus Christ. And he believed that he would restore his sight. So elevation don't come cheap. Elevation come with a price. And what are the price that you must pay? Number one, amen. So the 10 points I've given you was the acts of Bartimaeus towards being elevated. The price that you must pay, number, number three prices, amen. Number one, are we ready? Amen. Number one, you must be prepared to arise. Hallelujah. Amen. You must come off your comfort zone. Amen. Immediately was called, Bible says, he arose. Hallelujah. Isaiah 60, verse 1 to 6. Isaiah 60, we know, Bible says, arise and shine for your light has come. Somebody's light has come. You will see it, you will arise, and you will shine in the name of Jesus. I say someone's light has come. Elevation brings about your light being seen by others. Amen. But you must cling to it by arising. Hallelujah. You must leave the level you are. No one will be able to keep you on ground level. Situation of life will not keep you down. In the mighty name of Jesus. Number two price that you must pay for your elevation, just like Bartimaeus did, you must come to Jesus. Amen. That is, you must deny yourself and forget about what you are enjoying. Hallelujah. For what you will benefit for the rest of your life. He was enjoying arms from people. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh. Whatever you are not, don't claim that you are. Hallelujah. I repeat, whatever you are not, don't claim that you are. Amen. Because such don't come to Jesus. Hallelujah. Those who come to Jesus are people who have surrendered. Amen. Who have submitted that look, your will be done, not my will. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 to 2. Now, seeing that we have so many weight of witnesses, amen. Our Bible says, leaving those things are sin that does easily beset us. Those things that entangles us. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. It does not matter who you are, leave it. When he says, come, go to him. Hallelujah. It's the one that the president comes to. The one that the kings come to. The one that the queens come to. Hallelujah. It's the king of kings and the lord of lords. He's the one who has the power to enthrone and dethrone presidents and leaders. Amen. When he tells you to come, go to him. Amen. Number three price that you must pay for your elevation. Hallelujah. You must throw aside your worries. The garment was his worries. Thank you, that brother, for that. For, amen. You must throw away your worries. Amen. Some of us, we still carry worries. Hallelujah. Amen. I say, we say, we are going to Jesus. Amen. And then we'll sing the, I have decided. To follow Jesus. The moment you finish it again, you think about the worries. Ah, this bill has not been paid though. Amen. Praise the Lord. It will sort you out. I said it will sort you out. I said it will sort you out. When Bartimaeus was going to him, he did not even think for one minute. One minute is too much. For one second, that he will not get his healing. Anytime you go to him, throw away that difficulty. Because his yoke is easy and his body is light. Hallelujah. Then how does your price correspond to the purpose of God? Three points, amen. Number one, the scripture that I've given you, when you get home, go and read it. Number one, you must make sure that it calls you. 
Amen. How do you know that he calls you? Amen. John chapter 15, verse 15 to 16. Say, you did not choose me, I chose you. Hallelujah. You'll be among the chosen in the name of Jesus. I say you'll be among the chosen in the name of Jesus. The Bible says many are called, but only few are chosen. I pray in the name of Jesus. You'll be among the chosen in the name of Jesus. Why is the Bible says many are called? Because so many hear, but only few respond. You will be among those that will respond even to the calling of heaven to do work for him in the name of Jesus. Number two, there must be a command. Command place authority and mandate upon your destiny. Amen. Praise the Lord. And I pray that will happen for you. People will see your elevation and they will celebrate you in the name of Jesus. Elevation is not about number. Hallelujah. Elevation is spiritual. Hallelujah. A lot of people miss it. They'll be looking at numbers. Amen. But they don't know that elevation is about spiritual matters. Amen. And God will sort you out in the name of Jesus. And then number three. Amen. Christ must testify about you. Hallelujah. The Bible didn't tell us that Christ knew Bartimaeus. Amen. But just hearing his voice, amen, he testified for him by saying, bring him. Amen. Your voice, everyone will hear. Your name, everyone will identify in the mighty name of Jesus. So that each time you call, there will be a sound in heaven and an attention and an assignment and, a, and an instruction that you must be heard in the name of Jesus. In conclusion, the catalyst for elevation is in that Mark chapter 10, verse 49b. Mark chapter 10, verse 49b, and I want us to read it together. Please open your Bible to Mark chapter 10, verse 49b. For those of you watching online as well, please do likewise. Mark chapter 10, verse 49b. Mark chapter 10, verse 49b. Bible says clearly here, Mark chapter 10, verse 49b, that then they called the blind man, saying to him, be of good cheer, rise is calling you. Just underline, be of good cheer, amen. The catalyst for elevation is good news. Hallelujah. There's no one who receive bad news and feel elevated. Hallelujah. But when good news come, you feel what? elevated. You feel happy. You rejoice. I pray from today, good news will be coming your way. Good news will come into your life. Good news will come into your family. Good news will come into your business. Good news will come into your studies. Good news will come into everything that is just and concerns you, including your health in the name of Jesus. I say you will hear good news. Can you rise up? I say you will hear good news. I want you to cry out to God and say, Father, let good news begin to locate me. Let my good news come. Let my good news come. Let my good news come for my elevation. Because it is my time to be elevated. It is my time to be elevated. It is my time to be elevated. Let your good news, let your good news come for my elevation. In the mighty name of Jesus. Good news came for Bartimaeus. Oh Lord God Almighty. I ask for good news that will bring about my elevation. Henceforth, oh God, let good news become part of my life in the day, at the evening, at night, in the morning, and at all times, in the mighty name of Jesus. No matter what comes my way, no matter what I face, let only good news be my portion in the mighty name of Jesus. Help me to get the attention of heaven in the mighty name of Jesus. Help me to get the attention of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh Lord, walk with me. Walk with me. Hear my cry. Hear my voice, oh God. Let my elevation come in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, let good news from the north, south, east, and west, front and back, sideways, oh God, right and left, come my way in the name of Jesus. Let it be well with me. Let it be well with me. 
Let it be well with everyone under the sound of my voice. And watch it online in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh Lord, I also pray for anyone who is here to give or surrender his or life to Jesus Christ, oh God. Because of this good news, because of this message, oh God. Let there be an impartation. Let there be a transformation. Let there be an encounter, oh God, for them to live the old ways and begin to live a new life. We have good news will transform them for them to be elevated from sin, even to righteousness in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory be to your name. Honor be to your name. Thanks be to your name. Adoration be to your name. For in Jesus' most precious name, have we pray with thanksgiving. And the people say, and the people say, come on, let's put our hands together for Jesus in appreciating God for that message. Give him glory. Give him glory. Give him glory. God bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Can we put our hands together once again for that wonderful message? Amen. Hallelujah. Church, can you just join me in stretching forth our hands towards our pastor? Let's just pray a prayer of blessing unto him this morning. Let's pray that as he has watered us this morning, God and heaven will water him in return in the name of Jesus. That virtue that he has used this morning will be replaced, replenished and overflowing in the name of Jesus. Let's pray that the hand of God will be mighty upon him and as he has ministered to us this morning about Bartimaeus, that he himself will be elevated in every area of his life in the name of Jesus. Let's pray that he will never walk alone in this journey of life, in this journey of ministry, that God will always walk with him in the name of Jesus. Let's pray that his head will never go down. God will always be the lifter of his head in the name of Jesus. Let's pray for his household, for his family, for his marriage, for his health, that God will always be there to support him, to protect him, to preserve and to provide for him in every area of his life, and that his testimony will be that indeed we serve a mighty and a living God. And also let us pray for ourselves that as, as we have heard the word this morning, that the word will also do us good, that in our own lives, in every area of our lives where we are believing God for elevation, that God will lift us up, just like blind Bartimaeus received his healing and his lifting. That's every weight of distraction that is on our shoulders, Today, we we'll drop them off in the name of Jesus and we'll focus on Christ. And as we we'll focus on Jesus, that we shall be elevated. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's clap for Pastor once again.